okay friends now let us talk about motifs now uh, motifs are uh, just uh, print it in your mind that motifs are the base of making three dimensional protein structure or fully functional protein structure so motifs are the build motifs are the building blocks of a 3d protein structure or a fully functional protein structure okay now what are these motifs actually the motifs uh, motifs are the certain groups of secondary structural elements and the interaction of secondary structural elements with each other uh, that, that 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 is uh, uh, that is ri giving rise to a fully functional protein is called a motif so it's a unit of fully functional protein which is having the function resembles to the proper function of of a fully folded protein and uh, the property of folded protein okay and this is the smallest unit of a protein uh, which possesses the function of a protein and as well as the structural feature of a protein and motifs are actually based on uh, the interactions of the domains which is the secondary structure so the, there are secondary structures like alpha helix like beta sheets now this alpha helix and beta sheets all will uh, work together will interact together to make motifs so we, what are motifs it is b basically the interaction between this alpha helix and beta sheets and basically alpha helix beta sheets and beta wounds alpha uh, turns and all these things so all the secondary structures uh, the interaction between them are called the motifs now here are some uh, some of the common uh, motifs that are generally found in uh, biological system in in proteins are given four types of motifs are uh, denoted here one is the beta alpha beta motif which is uh, usually uh, the most abundant and most common type of super secondary structure or motif uh, usually right handed cross over as we can see so we have a beta strand we have another beta strand as you know these beta strands are parallel as we know when you're talking about beta strands and when you have to attach those the beta strands together we cannot attach by normal hair pins or something like that we have to make something which will pass through the plane so if you consider this uh, in this one plane so we need to have a linker which will pass through either upper of that plane or lowering that plane so it, it will make something uh, upper or lowering that the plane which is called the crossover so this crossover uh, of, uh, of uh, type of arrangement is needed for cross linking this alpha helices parallel beta sheets together and in this case it is an alpha helix which is uh, making this crossover so this crossover type of uh, protein attachment can be found so this is called the beta alpha beta motif which is really really most common type of motifs we can find so we have one beta sheet then alpha helix then beta sheet in biological system as we know as i have told talked before that uh, most of the time inside the globular proteins we found the anti parallel beta strands because uh, for maintaining the anti parallel beta strand is easy and maintenance is easy and the interaction is easy and they are really strong uh, 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 type of bonding they give the very very good structural integrity to the protein but uh, when we have parallel uh, beta strands like that in those cases we need this crossovers and in those cases most often alpha helix are generally present between two beta strands uh, to link them together okay and producing this beta alpha beta motif now uh, the second type of motif here in this picture is denoted uh, is called the beta hairpin motif uh, because why it's called the beta hairpin motif uh, first of all it is made up with only beta sheets so that's why it's beta and why hairpin because they are linked with hairpin uh, links so their hairpin loops are there this hairpin loops are linking this beta sheets and these beta sheets are must be uh, anti parallel in nature and exactly they are anti parallel in nature and they are attached with the hairpins to make this motif that why it is called beta hairpin motif and the third kind of motif i am going to talk about is called the alpha alpha motif that means as the name suggests two alpha helixes are attached together so not only two but many alpha helix can interact together to make this kind of motifs now this is a, a example of alpha motifs and in between them we have uh, stretches of loop so uh, loop is there or alpha loop or alpha uh, pin is there so this alpha this kind of loop is joining this alpha helices or sometimes the the continuous stretch of alpha helices can be make this kind of loops to arrange in such a way that they are uh, they they make a structure that seems uh, or resembling the two alpha helices are interacting with each other 
and the fourth kind of uh, motifs that we are talking about is uh, called the Greek key motif. This is another very important kind of motif, very very abundant motif. Now this Greek key motif, what we are talking about, is from N terminal towards the C terminal. From uh, from here, so we have a stretch of amino acid. If we consider this uh, at a straight amino acid, then we have N uh, one, then the blue which is two, then three. If we draw it straight, then we have four. Now we have a fold from two and three amino acids. We have a turn here. So this is a hairpin turn beta hairpin because we have anti-parallel beta strands. Now after the hair hairpin then then the finally this kind of arrangement so what will be the arrangement Th we, we just take uh, this second strand uh, and, and just put them together at this orientation then we lead to form this kind of structure which is called a beta uh, which is called a Greek key motif why it is called a Greek key because in uh, this is the keyword uh, uh, it is resembling the, the like a Greek key. That that's why it is called the Greek key motif. So you start point from this end, and, and the very very speciality of Greek key motif is we are having the start and end point as b beside one another. So the N terminal and C terminal besides one another, and all these other things are going on in the uh, other directions. So we have only four beta strands to make this protein in this picture, which is a simple illustration. But uh, we can have many different beta strands together to arrange themselves in such a way to make this kind of Greek key motif. So these motifs are really important because these motifs are the arrangement and the type of arrangement that tells us the what will be the function of a protein. And the interaction between these motifs is due to the hydrophobic interactions, there are electrostatic interactions, there are salt bridge interactions, there are uh, disulfide linkages and all these interactions, uh, there are uh, London dispersive force, there are van der Waals interactions which play a uh, very important role for these purposes to make these motifs. Now these motifs are called uh, the super secondary structure and these motifs are, uh, are something which denotes, which, which just represents uh, a part of the protein. Okay, so when we form a motif, that, that means we can say that we are going towards the formation of a protein. This is the very, very first step for making a protein. So we, if we divide a protein uh, functionally and we take one of them which represents the function of a protein, that will be the motif, not the domain. Because domains are a structural arrangement which is compact, but still they do not have a meaning because they, they are not organized. So if we are not organizing in domains, we cannot have a meaning to make a protein. So when you make motif, that means we organize things, we organize things, we give a meaning to that organization, go towards the functional functional protein structure. Okay, that's it, and I hope that's gonna help you. Thank you.